Hello everybody, it's CJ Miller. I'm in Shreveport, Louisiana, uh, across the river from beautiful Bossier City, Louisiana. I'm in the, the downtown neighborhood. I'm heading home actually. Uh, I uh, went to uh, have a good sauna at the gym and everything. It was really great. Uh, for the first time in a while, I was able to devote uh, some actual time, and I know that I always feel really relaxed uh, when I come from that, so it's great, because there's a, you know, there's a, uh, a, a dry sauna, there's a steam room, there's a, a, a hot tub, it's really great, so, uh, and then it's just good to get out, you know. Uh, I got a lot accomplished today. I want to comment the, uh, you know, uh, the pest control in my apartment. Now, I don't have uh, pests because in between monthly pest control, I also uh, do my own pest control in the apartment. But I was really impressed. Uh, this is the first time that uh, since they've switched over the management that they've come in and they've done it. And so I was really impressed uh, with what I observed, how well the, uh, you know, because sometimes, uh, you know, uh, you'll get that pest control, they'll come in and they'll, they'll hit you once in the corner and once over here. And these guys went like really great, you know, and they, uh, you know, he, he was, you know, like our sink in, in the kitchen. It is uh, on the other side of uh, the counter that kind of comes out and works as like a. So he was able to get both sides of uh, of that uh, counter, that island, you know, that uh, you know that bar top where the where the sink is on the other side of the bar, and he did uh, or that counter bar, whatever. So he did both sides of that. So that's impressive because that's something that uh, you know really needs to be thorough. Don't forget, you know that on the, this side of the wall also <laughs> is just as close to water. So, uh, and then uh, he, did re he did really, really great uh, with the restrooms and just really doing good. And I'll tell you something else, like, um, you know, I, I do, uh, uh, when, when I do the deep, like I, I clean every day, I'm not like a gross person, but whenever I do like really, really deep cleaning uh, every couple of weeks, I really do hit uh, my apartment up with uh, pest control as a, a preventative uh, measure because I walk downtown uh, just about everywhere, you know. And so if you come outside and you're now close to person, you really want to take care of that pest control. Uh, which you don't know, which you could bring in, what might jump on your socks or something like that. But that's cool. Uh, what else? I'm going to just come over here and just kind of run up that little hill there and uh, check my bell from the back side. I just I feel really good. It's just uh, me checking in with everybody. And uh, uh, I did go into a tanning bed and it was my first time in that particular tanning bed and yes, uh, I came out not like burn up like a, a lobster, but I did get a little too toasty and just a little bit, just a little bit of a skin irritation. Like, you know, where, where it itches for a day or so, but that's, uh, you know, it's my first time using that. So I'll just have to remember every time I go into a, uh, a different tanning bed or something like that, I'll just have to remember, hey, this one may be a little bit more potent than, than uh, the ones that I'm used to. So the first time in a new tanning bed, maybe you want to scale it back to just half the time. But, uh, and at least until you start getting a tan, then you can kind of like go a little bit longer, depending upon, but yeah, I did. I got a little, I got a little red and I was like itchy for, for a day or so, but I, I didn't get like horrifically horrendous. Uh, you know, it wasn't like, oh my God, I've got like sun poisoning, I'm going to die kind of thing. Uh, just a little pink sunburn, like the first time. What I did was I kept lotion on it for a couple of days, and it eventually uh, um, faded to uh, a good tan. Did you ever see that movie? <laughs> the, the, uh, 
has gone now. But it was that, uh, the stand <laughs> where they had the bird on top of the wire. <laughs> now, I guess, I guess it flew off and I didn't catch it, or either it's building a little nest up there and I can't see it. There it is. Like, yay. <sighs> Poor guy, I hope he doesn't get electrocuted. Like, I hope he's just up there and I hope he's not making a haul. Like, I hope he'll leave, because... Also, we've got, uh, right here, this police car has been parked here. Uh, since this has become G Unit Studios, and it's the Shreveport Police, I guess. I, I wonder if they're like su supplying that. Every once in a while, there'll be another police car uh, right there, and there'll actually be somebody in it. And uh, I guess that's for the the changing, because this used to be like you'd come down traffic, and you could make a right and come in here, because it was a one way. Well, it's still a one way street. Uh, but what they did was they uh, changed it and they put the signs on the other direction. So, uh, so maybe that's why they're there. Hey, how y'all doing? So, oh, I meant to go in and check my mail. Uh, I did not check my mail. Anyway, uh, I've always been like really envious of this little stone... Thing. I wanted to get something like that and then put it, but it's probably too heavy or whatever, but it's like a concrete thing and then put, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a cushion, put a cushion on the inside. So hang on. I may already have come in here and checked my mail, but then I started talking and forgot to do it. So just made me check it. Uh, you know, what, what can I say? No news is good news, right? Cool. So, um, okay. I guess I'm just gonna like uh, sign out because I'm almost home. Hang on, or I'll just pause it. Hang on. Cool, back home. Uh, you know, I live on the third floor. It's a three floor, three story walk up. So you people that live in larger metro areas are gonna laugh at this, but there are people, you yeah, because y'all live in like five, four, five, six story walk ups, that kind of stuff. There are people who don't want to come to my apartment for having to walk up two uh, standard flights of stairs, you know. And really, I was like, if you are too lazy, and it's one thing if you have a disability and you can't make it, you can't walk up the stair, but if you were just literally uh, so inactive that you won't go see someone because they live on the third floor and that means you don't just walk up one flight of stairs but you'll walk up a second flight of stairs if it's just a matter of lethargy you know how do you how do you pronounce it uh lethargic and lethargy <laughs> whatever i don't know had conjugate sometimes it'll trick me you know when you conjugate a word uh, pronunciation will change uh, from one syllable to another. But anyway, uh, yeah, if you have a little bit of a, if you just, ba that's basically what that means is uh, uh, either lazy or too apathetic to, uh, you know, make a motion for that cause, you know, uh, physical motion for the whatever. But anyway, there's the moon, so it's going to right there. Love it. But if you have an issue, where you have, uh, you can't walk up two flights of stairs, and it's not a medical issue, it's just a matter of, oh gee, I'm, you know what I mean? Then, uh, fuck yeah, I don't need your friendship anyway. <laughs> but aside from that, you kind of deserve, uh, you know, 
medical implications that will come to you if you are actually too lazy to take uh, two flights of stairs. Yeah. Uh, and uh, don't do well in life because if you do, you might actually one day live in a house that has three stories but without an elevator in it. And, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, uh, like a big mansion or whatever if you do well. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, yeah. I guess you can get one of those like stair crane things that'll take you up. I don't know. I'm determined in my mind that, uh, yes, there are medical things, diseases. There are unforeseen things that will happen. There are, there's wear and tear that will eventually take place in the body and, and motion will become uh, more difficult. And I understand that. But also, I think the way to a healthier existence is, uh, by not being very sedentary uh, and by having some physical activity, a substantial amount of physical activity, balanced, of course, with uh, recuperation and rest and relaxation, you know. But, uh, yeah, that physical time with rest time and then, uh, you know, uh, proper nutrition, nutrition and everything like that. Like, I'm in my 50s and I weigh... Uh, less than 160, you know, uh, that was really good. That's, uh, you know, that's good for me. Uh, I'm still working towards my goal of, uh, being, uh, just under 150 because that's actually ideal for me. I'm, I'm well within a safe, safe range, but you know, yeah, but that's, um, uh, that's something that I've been working towards. My goal is to have met that, uh, and I didn't set a time limit, but I kind of made that something that I was going to do in this year, be a little bit more proactive with that physical uh, part and continue on with my diet. And just kind of, I had gotten to a place at the beginning of the year where I was like, you know, uh, I took my diabetes type two and I made it asymptomatic. And uh, then I kind of stagnated for a while. Uh, without without much uh, uh, change from there. But what I want to do is I want to just, you know, like I said, get back up on that horse, you know. And, uh, yay. Because cause it's not really about, like, I, I know I'm in a safe zone as far as all that kind of stuff goes, but I really want to give myself a safe enough cushion that uh, should something happen and maybe I, I don't know, break an ankle or something like that and then I'm uh, laid up for uh a couple of months uh, you know I want to make sure that I've got like a safety cushion that not being able to be uh, physical in that in that area uh, that I would have uh, enough space with the weight gain that would happen that uh, I still wouldn't uh, you know that, that I would still remain asymptomatic I would not push that a1c over uh, seven, you know, which we, when they say, uh, your A1C is like 7.0 or above or something like that, that's when you really start, uh, uh, that's when they start looking at the, okay, now you're diabetic, uh, type two and, uh, you're symptomatic. And the first one being an elevated A1C, and then, uh, you can create, uh, damage depending upon the intensity to your liver, to your kidney, you know, to your organs and that kind of stuff. So, uh, and the other health issues that come along with that, you know, and it's just, you know, naturally metabolism slow, uh, as we get older, but, uh, that's not, uh, you know, that's not an excuse for me to, uh, sit back and rest on the laurels of becoming asymptomatic uh, I, c I can still do better, but it's also best to do it uh, gradually. I do remember that uh, for the first uh, year and first couple of months or whatever, uh, uh, th it took me that long to become uh, asymptomatic. Uh, a good a good year of consistent exercise and dieting, and yeah, yeah, let yourself sweat a little bit, you know. But, uh, and you can even do it even if you have uh, certain uh, conditions that cannot exert your body. If, you, if your body cannot 
uh, if you shouldn't be exerted, then talk to your doctor and see if you're uh, healthy enough for low level, low level of activity or whatever, you know. If, if not, uh, sit around and just, uh, just move, do something, you know, uh, change your posture. You know what I mean? Just getting in one position and staying still, you're not really burning extra calories, you know, uh, you know, so I don't know. Uh, what else? Um, I do not know. Uh, cause I, I do tend once I get on a topic, especially something that I'm passionate about, like diet or health or something like that, then it's like, you know, I don't want to shut up about it. What I'm going to probably do today is I'm going to lightly penne some catfish and that uh, probably do like a, a, a side dish, uh, just to break it up. Not, not that it will wreck my diet or anything like that, but yeah. But I don't think I'm going to do anything right now. It's seven, uh, and it's only five hours. And I haven't had anything uh, to eat today. I woke up late and got really, really busy on chores around the house and then went to the gym and everything. And I've decided I'm just going to let this turn into a day of fasting, uh, you know. So, because uh, some people, they say intermittent fasting. And what they really mean is not fasting. What they mean is they do all of their food intake within five or six hours and don't any, eat anything outside of those five or six hours. That that works too. That works too. But that's not truly like, uh, you know, if you, if you uh, every once in a while uh, go for a day of fasting, and I mean like, uh, you know, don't eat unless your blood sugar drops and you're about to like eat somebody's face or something like that. And even then, uh, if you have to do that, make it very light, just enough to get you through. But most, like, I haven't had anything today. Like, uh, I ate uh, my dinner at uh, 1 a.m., my, my, my dinner, supper, whatever, because cause I, cause I, uh, I'm up late and I eat late. And I, so I did that. And then, um, and what was that? That was, that was beef. That was very lean beef. And then um, no carbs. Uh, and that was, uh, yeah, this morning at 1 a.m. And so it would be around 12 to 1 a.m. today, give or take uh, a little bit of time when I'm able to um, um, have some more food. And because I because I am fasting today, then I can, if I choose to, you know, have a have a, a little bit of a splurge with the side dish or whatever. So it's cool. Now, Sunday, I mean, Saturday, I, I did go to uh, a buffet with my sister, but I mostly, I, I didn't totally ruin my progress, but uh, it was a brunch uh, buffet. And what that means is a little bit of a, you know, it <laughs> means some potatoes, it means some gravy and stuff like that. But that was that was a Saturday morning, so we're good uh, uh, on that, so. Uh, I'm well leveled out on that, um, and so I have such a I, su I have such habits that if I do decide to uh, get a little bit of uh, relaxed uh, on my diet and my and my rules or whatever, that I don't really have to feel guilty on that. But I, I do want to keep uh, those exceptions uh, to a minimum, you know. So. Um, Honestly, if you really want a good, if you really want a good tip for keto, keto diet, avoid anything that you need a can opener to open. There, I know there are some canned goods that have a pull tab, but just in general, if you have to open a can, uh, it's probably not conducive for a uh, keto diet. And then, of course, you want to stay away from uh, boxes, you know, too, too, too much pasta, too many, you know, uh, that kind of stuff. And then some things that you think are going to be really great for your keto diet, you find out <clears throat> in their natural state would be great for a keto diet, but by the time you cook them and add the flavoring and everything like that, they become not good for a keto diet. You know, because a lot of the treatments that we do 
um, you know, add salt, they add, uh, uh, you know, carbs where carbs would not have existed before, depending upon the, uh, depending, depending upon the way that you, uh, treat it, you know, like if you, uh, make a thick glaze or, or a demi glaze or sauce or something like that to, to, to put over, you know, so you just want to be really kind of careful, you know, and it's, um, I don't know. Uh, I'll tell you something else. The uh, what do you? There are so many different names for these things, but those cut French cut uh, string beans. Uh, that's that's really hidden carbs. Corn, corn is really hidden carbs. Now popped corn uh, and popcorn is something you'll tend to eat less popcorn than you would regular corn and. It, because of its nature and everything like that, it will expand. And so sometimes that can be okay because you'll actually eat a lot less of that. So if you're going to have to have some sort of snack issue in the day, like a popcorn would be good. Uh, barring a hor uh, if you don't have a heart condition, then you can do, uh, you know, like say pork rinds or, you know, uh, puffed corn che cheese kind of stuff. But, but depending upon keeping it within... Uh, Within range, you can have some, and uh, you, uh, and of course, you want to do that. If you do that, you want to do it on days where you're going to be more active, you know. But you can enjoy, you can enjoy things like that, you know. Uh, but corn, in its own, like a cream corn, it's 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 not that wonderful because we tend to eat a lot more. Well, I don't like well, I don't like cooked corn, but people do. They tend to eat a lot more corn uh, when it's not popped. And then what happens is you're like quadrupling the, the amount of carbs that uh, if, you're, if you're counting carbs in some sort of like low carb diet such as keto or any of the others, you want to be uh, careful about that. Chickpeas, uh, you know, uh, a, a lot of things like that, a lot of legumes, you know, uh, you know, sometimes they can be higher in oil, but you know, so if you're calorie counting, you want to watch on that. But you also want to watch and make sure that you're not. Some things uh, will actually be. Um, you you th you think not, but you find out that they're not really a protein. That they really are a uh, a carb type protein versus a meat type protein. Like like a lot of beans, and I don't eat a lot of beans. But a lot, a lot of them will will qualify as uh, meats and beans kind of proteins versus a carb, carbohydrate, which is another type of a protein. But for simplicity's sake, in, in talking about this, we call it a, uh, we call them uh, carbohydrates and, and measure them by when I say one carb or two carb, I'm talking about the gram as as a, as a gram of carb, you know, but um, or the gram of carbohydrate short of carb. So. Uh, but just know that carb is also a protein. But what you want to do uh, is you really want to uh, reduce carbohydrates uh, or carbohydrate proteins and stick with uh, non-carbohydrate type proteins. Uh, there is uh, a couple of exceptions, and that would be the, the types of carbohydrates that come in the form of refuge that uh, it's good for digestion and and quick processing of food, you know, in, in the body, helping, helping the body be more efficient and that's your fibers, you know, but in doing that, like if it's a salad, you don't want to turn around and put, um, salad dressing all over, you know, unless it is a low carb, preferably a zero carb salad dressing. And the same goes for any sort of, um, grains or anything like that you know you want it you want to get a uh, low carb on that as low carb as you can and then you don't want to ruin it by putting too much uh hidden carb in in condiments especially if they come out of a, a gross grocer they come from the grocer or something like that because as flavor enhancers there's uh various types of hidden sugars you know uh which just you know will just undermine sink your low carb uh 
efforts. You know, you'll you'll lose it in, in just a couple of bites. So yeah, be careful about that kind of stuff. Read the labels. You know, read the labels. Okay, I love you guys. Uh, peace, God bless, and uh, I hope you guys are having such a lovely day. Uh, that I'm having a lovely day. Manana.